Hi guys, welcome back to Geekism and we're back in Planet Coaster to do part two of our building tutorial. So in the last episode we built this, uh, we're trying to build this. So in the first episode we went over basic building tools, walls, um, roofs and some of the simple uh, sort of options you can do regarding those. Now we're going to sort of add all the little extra bits in, the scenery, the things that really sort of you know take this thing to the next level and uh, and hopefully we'll learn some of the uh, interesting sort of uh, key combinations as well while we're there so let's start off with the front of the building one of the things we're going to do is place a um, canopy on there you'll find these in buildings and custom and then in decorations and then shop decorations in its own area so like I said before, all the decorations within building are usually things that are attached to walls as opposed to scenery items that can be placed anywhere. Um, now obviously these things don't have to be attached to walls, you can have a, something on the floor like that if you want to, but uh, they're designed to go on walls. Uh, so here you'll see there's two different types of, um, of sort of shop awning. There are sort of flat pieces that can go over the shop just to give you a bit more detail. You can see there that we're not actually in this building, but we're not going to place it, so I just kind of want to show it here. Things like this in the sci-fi theme, and also there's um, other just some varying ones that you can change the colour of, or something like that. But uh, this is a pirate building, so we have the uh, pirate awning just here. So first of all, let's get into this building and edit it. There we go, we'll have to open this back up again. Okay, here, um, it's going to be quite tricky to see where we want it to be, and also it's going to try and snap inside and outside. It tries to snap to wherever your mouse is. I've just pointed at my mouse like that's going to work. Um, so you'll see here, look, it's sitting on the outside of the wall because the mouse actually sits on the wall, but when the wall goes inside, when the, excuse me, when the mouse goes inside the shop, it's snapping in a little bit. So what's well, probably the easiest way to do this is have it a little bit higher than you actually want it, and then to press X. Now X gives you the full movement. Okay, it starts off with a three axis, X, Y, and Z, and we can move them around just by dragging the, uh, the correct coloured arrow. And um, Also, if we press X and then X again, we have the same axis, but this time on rotation. And you can either have that snapping, or with spacebar, you can have it not snapping. And again, with snapping, you can change the angle it snaps at down the bottom there, and it will always snap from the angle that the piece is at the time. So this one there go 45 degrees, from that angle there, it won't go 45 degrees, uh, sort of from the, the the world's axis. Okay, hope that uh, makes sense to you. It's easier to just start that again to get it right. So we'll press X, we'll bring it down. Now we want to actually kind of be able to see underneath this now because um, we really want to get in there and make sure it's lined up with the uh, with the shop window. So we're oh they've quit. Look at that, they've got no nobody working for them, so they've quit. Never mind. <laughs> Um, so here what we're going to do is press T, and T gives us a, very, a different camera angle now, which is now sort of more like a first person camera. This time W will push you towards the, where the camera is looking, as opposed to uh, forward on the map. And now you're able to get right underneath to really sort of line this up properly. So we want it about there, and maybe a little higher so it doesn't cut people's heads off. She seems happy, she's not going to quit anytime soon. There we go. We'll take it off T again until we need that later on. Uh, next thing we've done, oh, we've got some wooden planks. These are quite useful as well, and they're uh, these are one of these items that you'll uh, you'll end up using a lot of. These are found in wall decorations, and if you scroll down, you'll see you've got a two meter plank and a four meter plank. These are very useful, very uh, sort of um, I don't really know what the word is, but you can do so much different things with them. We're going to place one here, and. Uh, I'll show you a cool technique with items like this. It doesn't necessarily be a plank, it can be anything. Uh, we've, when you've got an item in place, uh, we want this piece here, but it's actually a bit too long. So before we place this piece, whilst we're in the advanced movement, if we press another piece, it will put it there in the exact place it needs to be. It'll stay on the same line. Now sometimes this is a little funny, depending on, uh, depending on the pieces themselves, but this is very useful for uh, making certain pieces. I'm just going to put these bits of wood down and I'll show you what I mean. Something like that looks good. Okay, so for instance, if you wanted to build a statue uh, or a fountain, if you go into uh, props, there is a statues and centerpieces area. Say we put down uh, this lovely piece here and we want something on the middle here. Um, it's going to be a little bit of an issue to get it just right and there's a lot of judging to make sure we get it just in the right place. We can sit there with X and we can sort of pull it and drag it until it's just right. But instead, if we go back to this item and press X as if we're moving it and then select a different piece, we can then move that piece knowing the fact that it is in the exact right place. We can press it down, we can change the piece again, 
and bring it up and then, uh, and then rotate it round or use angle, snap there and uh, that's a really useful way for me if you want to make items with a sort of rotational symmetry or just anything like that. It's very, very useful for getting things in the middle of stuff. So we end up with a cool, uh, cool looking statue there. Anyway, we don't want that today. So we'll get rid of it, but it's a very useful technique. Uh, okay, so uh, let's have a look. Building and uh, decorations and miscellaneous decorations. We've got a skull and crossbones. We'll place him up there. Uh, one of the things I like to do, if you can, is just give a bit of an angle to stuff. Just gives it a little bit more character. No problem with things lapping, overlapping and stuff there as well. That's all good. Um, okay, so these are just little bits that we're adding on. We can add bits of nature on as well if we go to scenery, nature. Uh, wall climbers are very good for, for this sort of stuff. You can place those in again if you need to. You can use the X to put them in. And uh, bushes, there's a nice... Uh, where are these, isn't it? Nice, these nice sort of floral already creepers that sort of sit nice underneath wall uh, underneath roofs so um let's just pop those in there whoops i've uh, just start again with that and don't get it on the wrong axes there we go much better drop them in there and bring it down pull it in just so it's inside the wall a little more there we go we get really cool and you can sort of play around i'm not going to bother with all of those because you know that's more of a you know, do it later on. But the last two things we need to do are these two wooden areas and the chimney, and those uh, those both use various techniques to do. So we're going to go back into building, and we're going to go into our walls and floors. Uh, sorry, roofs and floors, flat roofs, and we've got this lovely wooden platform. We need to knock the grid size down to two so we can fit it in there, and then we're going to shift click to drag it down just a little. And luckily, exactly uh, what I wanted to happen has happened. You'll see here that this root, uh, this floor piece is sticking out of the wall and it's probably worth me showing you that uh, a little bit clear. excuse me, a little bit clearer. So let me just get a line plaster wall and a, uh, and a floor piece. Okay, so we'll put that in there. So say we're doing something like this, on the interior of the building we want a floor piece and we get this. I see these people have a lot of problem with this. Um, with the wall thing through, all you have to do is rotate the wall piece. So we'll press uh, M to move it. You see at the moment it's no good. If we press Z twice, it's fine. So it, they must have built these so that the walls are very slightly thicker on one side. I'm not too sure how it works exactly, uh, but basically you can get rid of that problem like so. So here we need to take this piece here, we need to move it, we need to switch it around, and we need to put it back in. And there we go, and now the, wall, the wood is no longer. Uh, attacking that wall. I mean, you might want that, you know, sometimes it could look nice. Actually, I think if the wood carried on round here, it would actually look quite nice to have a little trim. Uh, but for now, we're going to rotate that round. shouldn't make a, 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 make any difference to any other pieces. It just uh, makes the floor tuck behind the wall there, which is much nicer. Uh, in windows, it's a very useful piece uh, under window decorations, which are these wooden railings. And uh, these are really useful. You can do a lot with them. Uh, here, we're going to have to use X to drag them to where we want. And uh, yeah, we're just going to place them normal. I'm just seeing what I did before. And then we're going to use the uh, angle snap to get the right angle perfect there. And we're going to drag that in like so. So here we've got a bit of an issue because the corner of this piece here lined up is now too close to that. So what we're going to be able to do here is select both pieces. We're going to hold uh, control as we click them. And you can only do this when you're inside a building. So currently we're inside our building number 8163. So we can only do this inside a building. You can also click and drag, but that will select anything that is, uh, is touched by the, by the mouse box there. So we'll click and control click. And now by pressing X, we can move. Sometimes, unfortunately, these will get a strange sort of axis of in between the two. So rather than dragging them down correctly here, we're going to have to kind of do it like this and just kind of tweak until it looks right like so and then we'll actually layer it down a little so it's not clipping through the uh, counter there but that seems to be oh, about good yeah okay good uh, like so um, if you've got stuff outside of a building I'm just going to show you this um, so uh, let's have a couple of bits of scenery let's make a so what we'll do we'll make a simple fence because this is one option where this comes up a lot so we'll make a simple fence using these uh, like so okay 
So this is an awful, awful fence. But if we wanted to control, we can't multiply click these now. Control doesn't work. We have a multi-select tool down the bottom here that we can use to select them. But even then, we're only able to move these. We're not able to duplicate them in any way. To duplicate these, what the game would like you to do is make a blueprint of them by clicking this button here. You can save in blueprints and you'll see actually a lot of these little blueprints I've got. Wooden fence, uh, trees, fountains. Uh, wood floor. These aren't larger buildings that are going to be actually probably the use for blueprints, such as the theatre up here. These are little sort of. Uh, oh, let me just cancel that. Sorry. These are little things that I wanted to copy across. I've now realised that you can copy buildings. You can duplicate buildings, just not sort of groups of scenery. Hi. Sorry, I had to step away for a second then, so I'm going to try and sync this up well. But anyway, we built this, and we're not able to duplicate this, but we are able to do that uh, with a building. So if we go into buildings and. Um, there's a small wooden post you can use that works quite well. If you hold down shift and drag it down just so it's underneath and then click. Now anything you place on it, even if they're scenery pieces, will be part of this building. So um, let's go back to this decorations. I, I forget where this these iron bars were we were just looking at. Any columns were they? No. It was going to use the same pieces but it doesn't matter. Um, we'll go into... Is it windows? Oh yeah, window decorations, weirdly. So if we place these on now, we can bring it up, and we'll put you in, and then we'll put you in. And obviously, you know, these can be as developed or as de you know simple as you want. Uh, you can use pieces from scenery, from buildings, anything goes, it doesn't matter. But as long as all this is built within the building that is made by this small post that's underground, if we click done, we can now duplicate this. Because it's a building, it's got a duplication, so we can press duplicate. We get it. Now the problem is here that it goes it goes above the ground, um, so we have to shift and click it back down again, like so. But every time we duplicate it, uh, that's going to be an issue. But what you can do is if you press Control X, which is probably more useful for this, you can then drag it out like so. Control X, you can rotate and you can follow your uh, follow your paths to wherever you want them to be making fences and it's much easier than having to save all this into a blueprint. Anyway back to the building we're going to finish off with a balcony on this side here. If you look into building and columns you'll notice that most columns aren't on the grid but some of them are and some of them have uh, duplicates that work for both column, uh, both grid and non-grid. You've got wooden column here uh, is not uh, a grid piece and can be sort of chucked around anywhere you like but then there's also uh, wooden column, uh, wooden post here, which is basically the same part, but this time it is selected on a grid, which is quite useful, especially if you're doing sort of framework on older style buildings. Uh, so we'll go back into here. We're actually going to use the uh, the gridded one, and we'll, we'll uh, that's the two meter one. We want the four meter one. We'll drag it to a smaller grid size, so we can pop it here, and we'll drag it down a little. Place one in there. Get the height the same. We move across to here. Okay, um, there is a uh, a nice wooden roof, flat roof. A couple of these, literally, oh, just the one actually, uh, and these sort of edge pieces aren't on the grid. So we're going to use one of these because it's not on the grid. So we'll line it up on that wall there. We know it's flat. So as if we press X twice and use angle snap, uh, we'll know that that is now a perfect 90 degree angle. We can pull it out. We can lift it up. And we can do whatever we want with it, really. And we'll drag it over just slightly so it's out of that wall there. And we get a nice balcony. Now, obviously, you know, you haven't got to replicate this. The idea is to take away the techniques I'm showing you to, to create other things. But quickly, we'll use the um, X technique. I don't think we can actually use it on this because it's a... No, because it's a grid piece. We can't use the uh, duplicate technique to get the angle right. So on here, if we go into lights... We would like uh, there's a cool pirate post. This is just a case of lining it up roughly, and then using X to uh, to go in and do the finer details. It says about there. Uh, I wonder what that noise was. Then it's this thing. You can hear it. You can hear the candle in the wind. That's amazing detail. No reference to the Elton John song. Uh, there we go, and we'll drag that down a little so it looks like it's built into the post. That's great. And then last thing, I mean, there's some barrels over on that one. Scenery, uh, miscellaneous. Barrels are your friends. You'll use them a lot. Well, if you're anything like me, you will anyway. And it's just a case of sort of plonking them around to sort of fill in. Barrels are great for western, pirate, fantasy. They, they just work for everything. It's basically 
Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but in game development, there's a bit of a joke that the first model you ever make is a crate, um, and all games have crates in them. So uh, this barrel is almost like Planet Coaster's great. We're going to bring that round onto this, onto its side. Just give give the uh, give the area a bit more depth. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now there's a few other details over here that I've put on, but hopefully you can see that it's basically the same techniques over and over again. The last thing we're going to do is put the chimney on because I want to show you the aligned surface feature, and that comes very useful with chimneys. So chimneys are roof decorations. So if we go to roof decorations, you'll see our chimneys along here. Uh, we'll use this one. So at the moment, you'll see that because we have a line surface, which is mostly how you want to use it, it's a very useful line surface, but with chimneys it doesn't really work very well because it'll try to snap to the angle of the roof and that doesn't look great. So down here we've got a line surface, we're going to click that off and now that will uh, sort of find the surface but it won't angle it to the surface. So now we're able to sort of place it where we want roughly and actually just drop it down a little so it's more in line with where we want. There we go. And the last thing you can do with chimneys is you can go to scenery, uh, special effects, and then into I think it's ambience is the smoke. Uh, we're going to click that. We're going to duplicate it with X, so that we can then click the uh, medium smoke and bring it up, and then we'll get smoke out of that chimney. I know ideally it should sort of come out of these side bits. You can sit with a few of them and angle them better, but I'm kind of happy with that. And there you go. It's a bit more smoky than the other one, but the uh, the, uh, the, the theme theory is there anyway. So hopefully that's giving you guys a few extra little tidbits and uh, useful things. Always remember that there is usually a way around to do what you want to do. Uh, fortunately the controls are a little uh, com complicated but you'll soon start getting used to using Control D or M or Control X depending on the part. You'll start remembering where pieces are, you'll start remembering how you can use pieces in certain ways and, uh, and it all just ends up starting to come quite naturally to you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. There should be a nice circle on your screen that you can do that through there. And also there should be a link to another one of our videos. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.